Shut up and sit down. Good morning, <laughs> afternoon, or oh, evening. Oh my, what a start uh, to a new season. Welcome to a new season, new episode of Just Ball Things. It is season five time. It is time for some season previews. But first, we with me today, as always, with his face pressed right up against the camera. I'm surprised your big nose is not uh, creating a nice uh, divot. Uh, is the J-Man, Jack Manuel. How are you? I'm swell, Nick. I was uh, a little bit before. We obviously are a season five. Don't know how, but we are. I was also doing a little bit like a forehead test. Apparently, like, you do the fingers, and if you do from, like, your bridge of your nose to your forehead, and apparently that's how you're either a forehead or a five-head or a four-and-a-half head. I think I'm a five-head. I need to... Yep. I can't yep. do this with my glasses. Great my visual content. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube at OTT Basketball because uh, Nick is destroying his face right now, which is always fun. Oh, I've smudged up my glasses. Oh, God. <laughs> this, is, this is a nightmare. Just let me apply some... Uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> He's got these little cloth. <laughs> I've got That's my cute. little cloth. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> hey, when you get old, when you become an old man and you need glasses, you'll understand. You're younger than me. It's true. Jackie boy, we have got a big episode in store with some season previews coming up. The season literally starts tomorrow. Um, I got I, I got my wires crossed because I, mean, I should be used to it by now, but America's always a, like a date behind. So the 22nd is actually the 23rd in Australia. So I was excited for basketball today, but no, tomorrow. And that is fine. That is fine but we're going to take you through some season previews, some predictions. We'll have a look at some stuff that we did last year. Um, it's going to be a great episode. We'll see. We'll, we'll even give you an insight for those of you watching on YouTube as, as to the uh, the underbelly, the dark underbelly of uh, <laughs> that, that eyebrow is killing me, mate. Um, uh, <laughs> the deep underbelly of the inner workings of JBT. Spoiler: It's not very complicated. Um, so. But first, we have some official plug. You can contact us on Twitter at JBT Nick and at the J Man JBT. Make sure you give us a follow. Uh, we are also closely affiliated with OTG Basketball. Give them a follow on Twitter as well at OTG Basketball. If you're watching us on YouTube, you've already found the OTG Network on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, so you know when fresh content comes out, including uh, all the outlet stuff and obviously JBT as well. Uh, Facebook.com slash Just Ball Things. Give us a like and a follow there. Uh, and JBT Podcast at gmail.com. If you want to hit us up on email, please, for the love of God. I love the uh, I love using the Gmails. I know, I'm an old man. I'm the old man, Jackie boy. You stick <laughs> to your glasses. Twitters and I'll stick to my Gmails. <laughs> Got my glasses. And your little gla- no, show us the glass cloth again. I want to see it again. It's cute. Oh, it's all blue. <laughs> it's all blue. It says Levi's on it. I mean, it's... it's a bloody hey, are we getting leg, sponsored by Levi's this season? Sportsbet.com. Got it. Oops. <laughs> Obviously, I'm out of practice. Sportsbet, you need to sponsor us so that I can get back into practice. Uh, yeah. Sportsbet.com. There we go. I've got it. All right, Jackie boy. Let's get straight into this one uh, by revealing... Some of the uh, some of the documents that I, I mean, you can often see my eyes uh, peer away from the screen. This is what I'm looking at, and I hope you guys appreciate the inner workings. You know, we've got official banter time as an official minute on our uh, <laughs> on our doc, but let's keep going down here. It's all right. So I wish I could do like the the waves, like the memory waves, like like we're going back to last season. Jackie boy, Ooh. do you want to get us started on some of the stuff that we're looking at with the uh, with with last year's results? So we'll go rookie of the year, quickly go through it. Nick and I both had Zion, even though Nick didn't think Zion should even be playing. We all know that running joke. True, <laughs> it's true. Uh, both of us had Tyler Hero, Smokies. You know, he was pretty good. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, RJ Barrett, a little less so. Uh, Matisse Thibel, decent defensively. Um, not, a, not a Jar Morant in sight. No, say. no, I mean, but, you know, not even Zion. as a smoky. I see. I, I thought I was going. I thought I was doing away with picking the New York Nick uh, uh, 
rookie, and it's right there in black and white. At RJ Hampton. We, we will see That's if he's picking Obi Toppin for for this year very very no, soon. No, no, <laughs> I've learned my team. lesson. <laughs> um, we had a dump uh, section called dump prediction that could happen. I predicted that Kevin Durant makes a return this season. Tran will make an All Star team, and Which did Pat happen. could become the best. I got one thing right. That was, wasn't right. bad. Yeah. That wasn't bad. That's right. Dumb prediction that could happen. We, we finished fourteenth. <laughs> Did we finish fourteenth? No, nah, I think you, you were there in the. No, no, that's right. We're in the play. It must have Sorry. been like eleventh yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lakers fall out of the playoffs. Okay, that's, that's great. <laughs> that's, not, that's not, no, no, that did not happen. <laughs> and Carl Anthony Towns could get traded. I remember really thinking that one was yeah, legitimate. You'll pick on that. Um. Oh man, it's. I mean, this is a good start for me so far. <laughs> that's <laughs> very impressive. Trey Young will make an All Star team. Yeah, that's a look. I have to be when you're right fifty three percent of the time, you're wrong forty seven percent of the time. Why didn't you say that before? <laughs> oh, breakout reference. Breakout players. I don't. I think we both sort of. I get mine was a little bit more. Mine was, uh, mine was way wrong. Torian yes. Prince was not good last season. No. Um, I could pick him again, maybe. But I wouldn't say Ben Simmons had a... He didn't have a breakout year. He was all he, NBA, my dude. Yeah, but that's that seems to be like general... Would you call that breakout? Like, he doesn't seem to have... I don't know. I mean, all NBA, obviously very impressive, but it, it didn't sort like, of... Give yourself, I know you're used to being wrong. Give yourself some damn credit. It's a good pick, son. Breakout is like takes the league by storm, I guess. I mean, Torian Prince was never going to do that, even if he was good. Um, but like Ben, yeah, okay. I guess because because Ben Simmons, because it's like if you have a breakout year, can you have another breakout year? Or if you've already broken out that year, or like you know, like Victor Oladipo became an All Star, is that his breakout year? What if next year he became the MVP? Is that another breakout year? Like, it's just too confusing and classic me. Yes. I am definitely overanalyzing all of this stuff. Um. So players to make their first All Star team, Luka Doncic. You got it right, mate. Well oh, done. Yeah. Um, Tatum, you got that one right. Tatum made I did. it. I, did. Uh, I don't think Siakam and Mitch Siakam and Mitchell. I can't I'm even sure remember they did. now. Oh, they did. Sure they did. Oh, yep. there you go. God damn. Bang, bang, bang. And Levine was like so close in your Smokey. He started so well, yeah. but then he really did taper off. It was like, you know, you could have had Andrew Wiggins. You know, better, than this- my, better than my Smokey, Jackie boy. In <laughs> low marketed. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, we were saying this before the podcast. It's like, it's going to be good to revisit how dumb we were because it fits our brand. As we said on previous episodes, Laurie we marketed. would rather be entertaining and stupid than be smart and boring. Like, well, Just go to like the athletic or something. There is a a lot of hype around the Bulls as well last year. At the start of last year, people were hyped, and that's why I'm like, Laurie Markinen, I can see it, but then it would probably have to be that two Bulls would make an All-Star game, and I don't think that they were going to be that good yeah. uh, to have two All-Stars. But, you know, we live and learn. We live and learn. Um, most excited to watch this season, Jack. How did your prediction go? Uh, well, look, Kyrie played 20 games. Uh, Kat was really, really good. Uh, and Steph, for you, play about I mean, twenty yeah, exactly. games or something as well. That's so right. <laughs> if we want to get even more stupid, down to the coaches most likely to be fine. <laughs> I said Frank Vogel, which I think was a legitimate prediction at the time. Monty Williams, uh, not a good prediction because he also established Phoenix as a, a mm-hmm. rising team. You said Scott Brooks, which is, you know, why not? Uh, and you also said David Fisdale, which was correct. Yes, Fisdale did move on as my Smokey and I... I don't know why, and like in hindsight, why Scott Brooks would have... I guess because I had them finishing 14th. Like, I thought that they were actually going to capitulate. But actually, you know, it was sort of in that playoff window in the East a little bit. Um, And so I I feel like... uh, And we're going to see... I'll mention it as well when we get to the coaches to be fired uh, this year. But I think it's hard to to say... If you know into the season your team's going to be shit then it's sort of hard to fire that coach. It's like, well, what do you expect? Um, and so I think that, that might have been a little bit... Uh, yeah, anyway. Coach of the year. And I think this speaks highly of a future prediction on where we both thought the Jazz were going to be uh, and what the what most of the league thought the Jazz were going to do uh, last season. And so Qu- you took uh, Quinn Snyder as your uh, coach of the year. But I took Brett Brown. Because I have unwavering faith, and to this day, still have unwavering faith to Brett Brown. 
for some reason not only that my smoky was also luke walton i thought he may have <laughs> may because I, I i hold on if i scroll down did i put uh sa- no, spoilers 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 i think did i put, put sacramento no i didn't you had i thought you had them in the oh no i did head. i did i put i put sacramento as eighth and i remember justifying this it's like they got to finish eighth walton's got to be in the running for uh, coach of the year because he's done so well at this team and we'll see in the in my predictions here where walton is falling and how uh, i guess how far he has fallen mate um, you got another one right with the six man of the year mm, you're beating me you no harold time. harold won oh, i i guess i mean it was lou will and harold i was playing the field jackie boy that was pretty easy <laughs> look i was just doing the homerism spencer dimwitty and you know derrick rose i thought was certainly mm. in contention and yeah, look, yeah. Spencer Dimwitty or Carol Savert might be a bit of a sneak preview for one of my picks for next year. Uh, as typical, uh, doing the Homer picks uh, like I would on the Brooklyn Buzz. Mm. Yeah, no, I um, I was I was quite... Uh, despite the fact that I didn't want Harold to win, I'm glad that he did because I got this prediction right. Go me. <laughs> I'm actually doing okay compared to previous years. I think I went less crazy this year and I think yeah, I was yeah. a little bit more measured. Uh, so I'm glad that I could, uh, if I screw my head on right, I can get something. Uh, I can get something right. Uh, most improved player, um, uh, Jason Tatum for you, obviously was amazing. Uh, he was still like uh, all star, and you know that was oh, great. Yeah. These these tend to like first player to make all star and most improved player can be you know tied at the tied at the hip. Yeah. Um, and so Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball as well for your Smokies uh, obviously didn't go. Lonzo Ball had an improvement, had an uptick. Oh yeah, he he was so inconsistent though. Uh, but he the improved. bubble, his bubble was his bubble bad. was awful. His bubble was awful. Bad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, bad bubble. Feels like last season was such a long time ago. Uh, and obviously yeah. I had Zach Levine. Cool story, Nicky boy. Um, biggest splash on their new team. I got both of these kind of good. You, I mean, you I did. Get- you did. In um, Anthony Davis, obviously the big one. Yeah. I veered away from that one because I was like, oh, Anthony Davis, everyone's going to be picking Anthony Davis. And what did I pick, Jackie boy? Oh boy. <laughs> Al Horford and Severinsky. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much, Nick. That's a this Homer is pick. That is a wrong. Homer pick, if it's I've ever seen fun. one. It's more fun to be wrong and stupid. <laughs> I don't care that I got Jeremy Grant right and he was awesome in the playoffs and Anthony Davis was a nine finals MVP. Mm. I'll offer the Tomas Sarantzky a much better fix. That's right. I mean, the next the next one's pretty stark. We both had him beat for Defensive Player of the Year last year. Uh, obviously, Embiid with his uh, with his troubles during the year uh, that didn't eventuate. Your Smokey was a little bit uh, closer than my Smokey. <laughs> Andre um, Robeson barely played at all. <laughs> that's right. He was injured. He was yeah yeah. yeah he so, struggled to come back. Yeah, because he got injured the season before, and I'm like, and I, I think he was set to come back this season, but it yeah. never it never happened. Uh, and he was so good the season before. Anyway, I'm living in the past with Andre Robeson. Uh, MVP. Now, this is the important one. Not a Giannis Antetokounmpo pick in sight. We've got Steph Curry from the J-Man uh, and Harden from myself. And I guess I was... I, was I mean, I was closer. But because well, Harden's <laughs> standard remains true. That's good. That's right. That's right. I will pick Harden again this year and Harden again the following year. No. Uh, we obviously had Curry over from yourself, so... Two injury-ridden players as your MVP picks. Uh, good on you. Uh, and I had uh, Jokic as my smoky because the Nuggets were very good. It wasn't in that MVP Finally conversation, though. Love, Nick. I, yeah, I more enjoyed. love to come for Denver. So you're welcome, Nuggets fans. <laughs> uh, in terms of the standings, I wonder if I can... I think we up... got them... If you want to compare while I sort of go through them, it looks like we both pretty much got the teams correct, uh, except for you picking Detroit, Nick. Not your greatest pick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you got to do, Jackie boy? You can't win them all. You um, cannot, you cannot, mate. But, you know, look, I, I respect... You're a good takesman, and, and that's what makes for good podcasting, mates. Why well, we've been doing this for five years somehow. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I picked Sadoransky as my what was it biggest <laughs> splash on a new team because I thought the Bulls would be better than they were. Uh, so that didn't. I mean, that didn't go well. I'll see if I can. I see if I can bring this. Sorry to. Yeah, don't mind the Zelda background people. There you go. Because I'll 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 do this one. Ooh yeah, there we go. 
What do we got, mate? Now what do we got? With the I've, I've just chucked up the uh, the Eastern Conference standings next to Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, Jackie boy. Yep. Milwaukee top. Correct. Philly finished sixth. So, oh, they did not have a good year. Yeah, I did. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I had Philly first for reference. I mean, you can see <laughs> you that. so high on Philly. Uh, I was so high on Philly. I also had Brooklyn third, uh, whereas they finished seventh. You had seventh. them fifth. Uh, Boston, you had fourth. I also had fourth. They finished third. Pretty, I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, we both had Indiana not finishing nearly as high as fourth um, over the year. We had them uh, seventh. You had Orlando in your uh, eighth, which was very correct. And I had Detroit, and Detroit finished 13th. Uh, so that's uh, that's good. Uh, and Miami in sixth for you. I had them one, two, three, four, five. I had them fifth. Woo! Go me. That's a correct. That's a correcto. Uh, uh, no one had Toronto. Um, oh, you had them third, actually. So you were high on, higher on them. I had them sixth, and they obviously finished second last year. Not bad, not bad. In terms of the in Detroit. terms of the final, uh, so we had a we obviously did not have Miami getting close to that final. Um, we had Milwaukee v Philly, both of us, and I had Philly uh, passing through, and you had Milwaukee passing through. Obviously, n- neither of those uh, situations eventuated. It just seems how fickle the AFL, the AFL, the NBA can be. Western Conference, I am not prepared for this. Oh no, yes I am. Oh, go me. Yeah, Nick. Um, Jackie Boy with Denver finishing top. What are you doing, mate? Denver! Denver? <laughs> uh, whereas I always had faith. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. I had the Clippers finishing top. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you Lakers third, my I dude. I did. Oh, damn. I how dumb worse. does that seem now? Like I had them fourth. And you had them fourth, like, yeah. How, how silly does that seem now? I had Utah second. You also had Utah second. Uh, they finished sixth. Yeah. Uh, and oh yeah, I alluded to that before. Everyone thought that Utah were going to be so much better than what they were. Um, yeah, I obviously had uh, some highlights there. I obviously had Sacktown uh, scraping in on that eighth seed. But I did say that the Spurs would not make the playoffs. And they did well. not. I did. And they you did, did well. not. Uh, and I remember receiving a bit of flack from you. Um, we had Golden State in there, obviously. Injuries, what yeah, injuries had uh, completely stuffed it. Um, I had a Clippers-Lakers conference uh, final, um, which obviously the capitulation of the Clippers didn't have that um, happening with the Clippers winning the championship. We both had the Clippers winning the championship. Um, and you had uh, a Utah Clippers final. So, I mean, the final and the standings are quite hard to the, to predict, but it's it's always good to see something like the Golden State Warriors. You predict them there, they finish, you know, last. last. Portland, yeah. uh, Portland had some, you know, rough times. You had them six, I had them seventh, they finished eighth. So I think we like we hit, hit the money on that one. But then teams like Utah can really throw the spanner in the work. So it's, it's good to so revisit these. And then obviously, it as is. I alluded to before, championship predictions, both had the Clippers. The Clippers were, man, they, they, had, a, they had a massive run of momentum coming into the start of that season. Everyone was so high. But now let's do the wavy uh, uh, memory thing back to present time. Jackie boy, let's get started here. You can see here. There you go. Oh, I'll get rid of the standings. Blow this up a little bit. Look at that. Bang, bang. Look at that. Um, Jackie boy, rookie of the year. We are both taking the safe route, I would say. No real yeah. flyers here in LaMelo Ball. I don't know where the bookies have uh, put him. He's I don't know favorite. where his odds. He's clear as a favorite. Okay. Um, and I think not only is he um, an NBA-ready talent... Uh, his passing is that of a great NBA player. Um, and he's playing for a team who have Devontae Graham. And Terry that's Rogier. it. Ter- no, no, they've got no one else, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> they have no one else. Well, scary. Hey, scary Terry's not bad. But look, the way you judge Rookie of the Year is counting stats. Counting stats mm. and minutes. And, and that's what I mean. Like, ball- uh, yeah. uh, Charlotte having no one is just cause for LaMelo to do whatever he wants. Which, you know? which is yeah, why I had Killian Hayes as my Smokey as well, because it mm. seems to me the preseason that they're giving him the reins. Derek Rose is sort of giving him a sort of mentorship role, and you know Detroit are going to be bad, and I think he's going to get reps to do it, and he's looked okay. I think he's had some moments here. 
you know, it, it's hard because there are a lot of sort of like role player dudes. Like, you know, my, my favorite rookie in this class, the, the boy from Sydney, Aussie Josh Green, playing for the mm. Dallas Mavericks. But then, you know, you've got Denny Avdia. I really like, you know, I was watching his game. Just, the, just yeah, just um, what I've seen in the preseason has, you know, it's it's enough of a smoky. He's yeah. not going to win rookie of the year, but it's enough to, to predict a smoky. He was he was strong. He seemed so confident. He seemed so enabled by uh, by his other players and his teammates. It, it looked good preseason. We'll see, you know. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's good enough to to warrant a smoky. We'll see how it goes during the year. Yeah, I like it. I like mm. it. Um, we only did one dumb prediction that could happen because this is the most unpredictable season in NBA history <laughs> and you can't predict uh, a COVID season when a goddamn pandemic happens. Mm. But I I put this out on the Brooklyn Buzz season preview. Uh, go check that one out as well. There's a couple of episodes heading into our season open against Golden State tomorrow night. Uh, and I put out the fact that maybe Kyrie Irving makes all NBA. Is now, that that dumb though? Like he is a he's an all NBA player. Like he, he has, but he's not he's never healthy <laughs> so like it <laughs> basically if Kyrie Irving plays what 55 games is that good enough for all NBA possibly I just think that he can be brilliant him and KD mm. have been really good in this preseason again it's preseason but Kyrie Irving's talent you know and you know uh, Corey and I you know I think the top 50 will have dropped by the time we drop this and you know we had him in the top 20 as well and he mm. could certainly grow and you know he can rival guys like Damian Lillard Stephen Curry on their night you know he's hit one of the best shots in NBA history I and there's a lot of good guards obviously there's guards on the come up like Jamal Murray and Ja Morant and Trey Young I just think that on his night there might not be a more talented player uh, at his position mm. in terms of point guard than Kyrie Irving now again Stephen Curry is, is goddamn amazing and Damian Lillard is goddamn amazing, but uh, I've got to give a homerish stand, Nick. I've got to get those Nets fans listening and subscribing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. I don't think it's that crazy dumb, but I also don't think mine is that crazy dumb either. Uh, I alluded this uh, a few episodes ago. It might have been last episode uh, that Russ will average a career high in assists uh, this year, this coming year. Um, in hopefully he takes that role of more of a facilitator than than a, an outright scorer um and even in his outright scoring seasons he's still you know averaging obviously his triple double years at least 10 um there's no reason why with the quality that we have on this um on this wizards team which is something i haven't said in a long time um in you know, Avdia can uh, contribute. We've obviously got Bertans and Beal as well, and um, Bryant, and I mean Hachimura is, is developing. Um, he'll be playing more inside though. Um, but there's no, I mean, again, we're not just singling out shooters. It, it, uh, Hachimura will also get serviced by uh, uh, Russ as well. Um, you're gonna see, you're gonna see assist numbers flying. I can see that happening with Russ. Uh, so I don't think this is a completely dumb prediction, but. To think that over his entire career, he would have averaged the most assists in like his 12th season, 10th season. I don't know how many seasons he's played. Something like that. Um, And it's with the Wizards. Like the the team where he will get the least accolades is where he is the most influential, uh, has the most influential assist numbers. Uh, That does sound dumb. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it, I, I, de- I can definitely see it, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited, and this is a dangerous. This is dangerous for me to be because I've been excited about the Wizards before. Why not, mate? Let, let's all get excited. There's not a lot to be excited about this year, so it's a good way to end it. Mm. Players to make their first All Star team. Now I have a good run at this, so hopefully, you know, I'll continue that run. I had Zion and Jamal Murray with my Smokies being Ja Morant and Jalen Brown. Mm. interesting jackie boy i mean the zion is zion is i mean second year player you imagine that he's going to make a uh or be a little bit healthier you know health is going to be the 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 prime thing for him but he was you know he was talked about winning rookie of the year playing less than half of the season you know um and i think that that speaks volumes to how he plays who he is you know um and so I, I don't don't hate that. I definitely don't hate that. Um, your Smokies in Jar Morant again. It's it's sort of like who are, who are the rookie of the year and who are the rookies that really impressed. You expect them to take the next leap. Um, 
And yeah, it, it sort of, after the bubble that we saw with Jamal Murray, that's, and I was sort of on the fence a little bit with, um, oh, why can't I, re- TJ Warren, uh, for the same reasons. Massive bubble, I guess, like uh, he did all of that in the uh, in the seeding games. Uh, can he bring that into the next season? Maybe not. Maybe not an all star because um, I think uh, if anyone comes back firing, is it'll be Ola Depot for that team. Um, but the players that would have like a, a a fairly solid rise, I would put TJ Warren in that, and I can see Jamal Murray taking that same sort of trajectory. Um, it's just a matter of whether he can show us that that wasn't just a blip in the radar, you know, blip in the ocean. So, hopefully, my picks, Jackie Boy, and Zach Levine, and Fred Van Vliet as my Smokey. I'm really high on the Bulls this year, and I was high on the Bulls last year, and this could all come <laughs> crashing down again. Um, I'm not so high on them that I think they're going to make the playoffs, uh, but I think it they will be good enough and... Because he was close. He was close last year and there was a lot of talk about uh, whether he was a snub or not. Uh, and I think Beal not making it sort of took that spotlight away from um, Levine. Uh, but I think the Bulls will be better this year and he will produce at a level where his name will definitely be in contention. And if he does get in, he'll scrape in. I'm not saying that he's going to be so good that he's going to lock it in. It's the East. Uh it's easier to get in, and I think the Bulls will be good enough to warrant a spot. So, all power to you, Zachy boy. Just keep keep doing your thing. You want an All Star? You want to be in, in at the All Star? I guess there won't be an All Star game this year. But I mean, probably, probably not, uh, <laughs> given how things are going. Um, but yeah, at least you can have that uh, trophy on your mantelpiece. Big oh. time. Yeah, that's it. All right, Jackie boy. What do we got next? Uh, most excited to watch this season. No surprises that you're going for KD. Uh, and he would have been mine if you hadn't have uh, sniped him from me, but I'll let you have it. Uh, you've also had Steph Curry, and hopefully he can hopefully he can stay somewhat healthy. Uh, yeah. And I think that is, that's the key for that one. Um, for both or, of them. Oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Um, are you going to see like less games out of KD, like less games out of Steph, or are you going to see them back at, you know, given that, you know, they've had more rest than their oppositions, I would say. Maybe it's not rest because it's more rehab, uh, if that's not really rest. Um, but yeah, would you expect to see them, I guess, playing more games than, say, your LeBron James, for example, your Kawhi Leonard, who, are, you know, there's a lot of players, I, I think Scott Brooks said, Russ is not playing back-to-backs. Um, yeah, that's sort of been mentioned by Steve Nash as well about the load mm. management for KD, Kyrie. You know, 72 games in a condensed season, coming back from an Achilles injury. There was talk today, I spoke about this on The Buzz, about, you know, KD feels like, you know, Steve Nash said he's at like 90%. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. He looked pretty damn good for the 90% against the Boston Celtics. Mm. I, I don't think he's going to, I think Stephen Curry's going to be fine because, you know, his, the nature of his injury was just like a broken hand. So, you know, it's not that he's conditioning and there's going to be other areas affected by his injury, like he could have, like, calves or, or that sort of thing. So, because he always has some level of, like, ankle troubles because of, you know, his, his previous concerns is why he got that um, small little contract and it led them to get Kevin Durant mm. in the first place. So, look, I'm... I'm hoping that Kevin Durant and Steph Curry are... I think Steph will, will probably play, like, you know, 65-plus games. I think KD will play 55 to 65. Um, he's a hooper and he's going to want to be out there more regularly. But as long as he is healthy at the most important time in the playoffs, um, that's when we need him. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, I do like those. I do like those picks. And I am, like I said, I'm high on the, I'm high on the net. So I'm super keen. I'm so keen to see Brooklyn play. Uh, and I was very excited to see them beat my Wizards uh, in the preseason. Uh, my most exciting is a very, very boring pick. It's Russell Westbrook. It's Wiz- It's the Wizards team in general. I was... I, I got a taste of them in the in the preseason, and they looked great. They looked alert. I'm seeing, you know, Coach Russ on the uh, in in you know on the training on the training courts, uh, you know, coaching and mentoring, and 
I guess just enabling his players and you know instilling some sort of confidence in in an organization that is severely lacking in it. Um, his relationship with Scott Brooks is is going to bring out some of the some of his well did bring out his some of his best basketball when he played at um, Oklahoma. Um, so yeah, Russ is he's going to be dynamic. He's going to be so yeah so great. Anyway, I can't. I, I've spoken about Russell Westbrook enough. <laughs> Let's go on a bit of a, a bit of a you know left field bit of left field here. Coach more likely to be fired. Now I had Lloyd Pierce of the Atlanta mm. Hawks. Now there is increased obviously going to be increased pressure on him after this off season that they had. Mm-hmm. Nate McMillan as their number one assistant as well. The former coach of the Indiana Pacers would be a ready made replacement if that were to be the case. Mm-hmm. You know the heat is on, and there's been rumblings in the past and last season that you know Trey Young and Lloyd Pierce had friction. Now I don't know if I buy into that and who that was ported by specifically. I don't think I saw it on like NBC Sports. So. Look, I think that there's going to be pressure on them. Then there's probably other coaches as well, like you know Flip Saunders, Scott Brooks, like your sort of picks there. And but I put in Mike Budenholzer because whether he's fired in the regular season, I don't think is going to be the case. But if we see Mike Budenholzer play Giannis 28 minutes again in a goddamn postseason game, I might shoot someone, Nick. I might be that. I might go to Milwaukee, break quarantine and all these restrictions because he is just stupid and inflexible and rigid. It's so, it's frustrating because we know that it's just like, hey, play the good players Mm. more minutes. You might win more games doing that thing. And it's just like, I can tell you that. And I'm an idiot. I picked freaking Frank Vogel to get fired last year. Oh, God. Infuriating, Nick. Infuriating. Yeah, I like the Mike Budenholzer pick because of, you know, what the playoffs had had, had proven. Um, I think... uh, I think Trey Young making the All Star game last year was possibly the worst thing to happen to Lloyd Pierce because if Trey Young had made the All Star game this year instead, he could point to that as being look, look progression. Don't get rid of me. Um, but I think him making the All Star team, the Atlanta Hawks are going to want. They're going to want playoffs, um, and I don't think they'll make it. And they they, they could be in a situation where. Uh, they fall below expectations. And then in that case, you know, that's when your, your Lloyd Pierce's will be let go, um, if, especially if they start slowly. If they start slowly, oh boy, yeah, um, it'll be hot. That seat will be hot, which is why I picked Luke Walton because I have no faith in the Sacramento Kings. You picked a, him to be... <laughs> as opposed to last year <laughs> when I picked him to be coach of the year. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, this year proved to me that... Luke Walton is not a good coach. And I think that's... Nope. Uh, yeah, I, it was something that I was holding on to for so long after, you know, he did so well at uh, Golden State. Uh, but I think that just speaks to the stability of that organization, the quality of the team. Um, not not belittling Steve Kerr's, you know, influence because it's not like anyone could take over that team but he set forward an architecture that was so him and, and bob myers um uh an architecture that was so stable that someone like luke walton could succeed there and now that he has the reins obviously the kings are not exactly the picture you know the picture of stability um you know, their front office is renowned for making some of the worst trade decisions, not trade, drafting decisions uh, of any organization. They're obviously one that, that that doesn't make good decisions. And I think this has really exposed the cracks in Luke Walton's, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Expertise. Like ap- ap- aptitude? No, that's not the word. Aptitude. aptitude. Ineptitude. Aptitude, yeah. His aptitude for for coaching and or lack thereof um so yes i think uh they'll have another underwhelming season they will see another season wasted for fox and that'll be it i think that will be uh that'll be it for walton so he is whether it happens early whether it happens first or whether it like it will happen this season unless the kings are good but i really don't think that'll happen um 
my also smoky Scott Brooks because I always put Scott Brooks on the cards despite the fact how excited I am for Washington. If it all blows up in our face, then he could go. Although I would I would be curious to see how Russ goes because he could presumably he doesn't turn against Brooks and that could save his job. Uh, yeah. But you know, so that's why that, that's why I was the smoky. Like if we're bad, then he could be, but Russ could be fighting for him, and you know. There's a whole lot of uh, politics that could happen. But coach of the year, Jackie boy, you've got the uh, newly appointed coach for the... C- come on, Sixers. Come on, Nick, Nicky boy. Sixers. Yes, that's right. For some reason, I was thinking Houston Rockets, and I'm like, no, that's the other guy who I don't know his name yet. Um, Sid and Silas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is how much prep I've done for this podcast. Thank you. Um, for some reason, Doc is just, in my head, is still... Clippers, 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 but you know that obviously blew up. So big things for the Sixers, then, Jackie boy. Yeah, look, you were drinking the Kool Aid last year, Nick. It seems to me I'm replacing you uh, this year around. You know, I think you know when we get to our standings, I'm pretty high on them. I think that they are a legitimate Eastern Conference Finals threat. You know, I think Daryl Morey's impact. You know, I think he's going to be making moves whether you know they acquire James Harden for Ben Simmons or there's other smaller mm-hmm. moves. Yeah, you know, and I think Doc Rivers can get the best out of Joel Embiid, and I think that's going to be the key. Because yeah, Joel Embiid, you know, he can go, you know what? You're not fit enough, fat boy. Get down and, and run some suicides for me. Um, probably shouldn't have said fat boy. Um, <laughs> Small time. Fat Such boy. an oxymoron. Calling Joel Embiid fat boy. Yeah, look, he, he, he needs to get fitter. And, and his yeah. conditioning does need to improve. And, and that's, that's a simple thing that can stop him from being truly great. Um, and I think Doc Rivers can cert- certainly get that out of him. And he's also a really, really good coach. And hopefully they don't, they don't get a 3-1 lead in whatever post final <laughs> appearance that they do get. And I had to give the smoky to Steve Nash, who is your coach of the year, because uh, he he's just a sexy man. He is he looks good. so sexy. He is the sort of new Quinn Snyder of the uh, of the league. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's overtaken the sexiest coach. Um, yeah, and he's just you know the coaches have so much old man swag. It's great. I mean, like I wouldn't really call Quinn Snyder an old man. He's not pop old man, but he's not young either. Um, nah. And you know, Steve Natch even younger, but he's still got that that that. I don't know that the sort of corporate swag. Anyway, we're not talking about we're not corporate talking about the swag, swag. of uh, Steve <laughs> Nash. Um, I'm high on the Nets. Of so many times, so I have to say this. Um, and if they finish where I think they're going to finish, and if they progress in the playoffs, how I think they're going to pro- progress in the playoffs, he will win Coach of the Year. He the, and you know I think the media has so much to play in this in their recent sort of accusations of Kyrie Irving, like. All of the stuff that Kyrie has drawn can elevate Nash's sort of, um, I, I, I guess, um, uh, you know, candidacy. Oh, God, my brain is not working today. Uh, candidacy for um, Coach of the Year. And, you know, he's like saying about how he brought these two superstars together and everything worked all right. Kyrie was very, you know... Uh, you know, had a had a terrific year. Everyone was healthy. He brought in all these assistant coaches. It was a bloody masterclass. You're going to see experts picking apart Brooklyn games and seeing, oh, you know, uh, D'Antoni uh, was very, you know, prominent in in that area. Uh, he, you know, Jared Allen clearly learned this from Stoudemire. Like, you're you're going to be seeing these deep analytics in in Brooklyn games because. They have the most famous coaching staff, and everyone knows their name. So it's not like you, you, you know, you're bringing in abstract names and be like, "Hey, that guy's really good." These are household names that people know, and people are going to want to know how they've impacted the Brooklyn Nets. So, if all goes well, um, which I believe it will, Steve Nash, uh, it'll be just, uh, uh, yeah, it'll it'll go well for Steve Nash. So. Um, Here's hope for Jackie Boy for your sake, but uh, one other one other one for me, Monty Williams. Um, I'm very high on Phoenix as well. The acquisition of Chris Paul was a was a masterclass. It was a stroke of genius, um, and I think uh, his acquisition alone will uh, boost all of the other players. Uh, the younger players will learn so much from him. We saw the growth in Shea Gilgis Alexander and Schroeder from um, uh, from. Uh, Chris Paul being there in in Oklahoma, so I am very high on the um, on Phoenix as well. So um, yeah, 
he could, he could definitely pip that award. So yeah, yeah, it's two two fairly sound picks that I'm quite confident on. I'm I'm quietly confident about either one of those two winning coach of the year. So uh, you know, I'm not 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 so confident on most of my other predictions. Sixth <laughs> man of the year, Jackie boy, you've gone with a homer pick and Karis Levert. Look, he if he if he maintains the six man role, he is the best player coming off the bench in the NBA. You know, he's being referred to as our Manu Ginobili. He's our third best player, and he's coming off the bench. That's like putting Drew Holiday on the bench and telling him to come off the bench. You know, it's it, it, he is going to cook against second units. Like there is going to be no one in a second unit that can stop him. You know, it's it's plain and simple. He did it against the Boston Celtics. Obviously, they have a, a clear lack of depth. But I just think that if Karis LeVert maintained now, and he will close games as well. You know, you always get the the players that like get the closing game bump. You know, I think Lou Williams is my smoky pick because I just had to pick someone else. I'm like, oh, well, Lou Williams is always a safe bet. It's like, you know, if we did this like three years ago, it would have been Jamal Crawford. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I like it, Jackie boy. Um, obviously, I'm a, you know, we were talking two years ago how Karis LeVert is the is the superstar next to D'Lo. Like, he is the, he's the next star of that of that Nets team. Obviously, trades have happened and blah, 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 blah. Um, but I do like uh, is, because obviously you bring those quality guys off the bench and it certainly does work. We've seen it in in, the, in Clipper land for two years now with uh, Lou Will, uh, who's obviously good enough to start. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going with a guy who got snubbed this year in Schroeder. Um, although now that I'm thinking about it, start. he's probably going to start now that Chris Paul's not there. So, not Chris whoops. Paul. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chris Paul. No, uh, Chris Paul's not there now that he's not there. Well, he's at the Lakers now, my guy. Oh, yes. Sorry, my bad. My brain is still... Oh, well, then, yes, that's right. I did write this down a while ago. Yes, that's right. Sorry, my brain is uh, my brain is not working. He's definitely going to um, come off the bench for the Lakers. He's not going to. I, uh, he's not going to start. For, he's not going to start for the Lakers. And this is this is this is why I put him. Not only that, but the Lakers are going to be winning this championship next year. They're going to be good. They're going to get good um, bench production because they, they, they they've strengthened their team. I think, uh, and Schroeder is a massive piece in that. He was so good last year. He deserved to get it last year. He'll get sympathy votes again this year. And he will he will come off the bench for the Lakers. Yes, God damn. Fair enough. Preparation I'm, I'm, is rock bottom, Jackie boy. Yeah, look, he he <laughs> he wants to start, and look, he certainly could start. It's it's if he does come off the bench, then I think he you know he was very close to winning it this year, Nick. So the starting um, I, experiment did not work, Dennis. It didn't work. Dennis. Come off the bench. <laughs> yes, Dennis. <laughs> um, let's move on to the most improved player. I have OG Ananobi with my smoky is DeAndre Ayton, who you also share with that. Yep. You know, you've made your thoughts clear about the Phoenix Suns. I yep. agree. Chris Paul is going to... He makes he makes bigs better, and he's already mm. made another big named DeAndre better. Um, That's so right. So he's probably going right. to do it with a, with, a, with a second DeAndre. The name is OG important. Anan- OG Ananobi, I'm just uh, ridiculously high on. I think, mm. you know, he got that extension today for his $80 million. I think that was an absolute steal from the Toronto Raptors. I think that he is going to be great for them. And, you know, I saw Dave Dufour of the Athletic Fame, and, you know, I've chatted with him on a podcast before, that he thinks OG Ananobi could become the best player on the Toronto Raptors and, and it overtake Pascal Siakam as the number one option. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm with it. You know, I'm going to go all in on that as well. I think... OG Ananobi, I struggle not to have him in my top 50 as well with K-Wall um, for, for OTG's top 50, which is mm. dropping really, really, really soon. But yeah, and I didn't want to give it to Population Control Porter Jr. because, you know, a guy can't win most approved if he's not taking the vaccine, Nick. That's fair. He might be exiled from the league if he uh, refuse, <laughs> if he refuses. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've gone Michael Porter Jr. He showed, a, he showed me enough in the playoffs. He's got the attitude. Um, he... He's just good. Like he's, you know, injuries were always a problem with him, and and people knew that you know if he could get if he could get his injuries under control, then he would be, and then he was the best player in that draft. Uh, but the injuries is why he slipped, and Denver really it was worth taking the flyer on him a hundred percent. I think they got him at six or something like that, uh, or nine. 13. Was it thirteen? Oh man, yeah. he dropped ages. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, a hundred percent worth. Uh, and he is certainly showing his quality, his athleticism, and his his skill. Such is, athleticism. Such athleticism. Uh, and his skill are, are are they're just. I mean, they're great. I mean, I'm I'm running out of I'm running out of words to say. Um, and so enough to make an all star. Maybe, maybe not. The West is the West is always hard, um, but certainly enough to, um, yeah, to 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 take that take that most improved player award. Given that the Nuggets will be good as well, and he'll be um, he'll be an important contributor to them if he can shore up that defense. Ooh, that defense. Um, players to make the biggest splash in their new team, Jackie Boy. You're copying me a little bit, even though I don't have this guy, Russell Westbrook. Talk Russell about. Westbrook, it's clear. You made all the points earlier, yeah. Nick. My smoky is Serge Ibaka because, one, I think the relationship that he has that's established with Kawhi Leonard, I mm. think it's going to be good for him because Kawhi seemed to sort of exile himself a little bit from the team last year, whereas now he's got a friend. <laughs> it sounds weird. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm a kid at lunchtime is just like, oh, he doesn't have a friend to play with. I'll give him a Serge Ibaka. Kawhi, <laughs> go, Kawhi go play with Serge. But... I think that he can, and I think as well in terms of on the court, he is an upgrade over Montrezl Harrell, and he makes so much of an impact defensively. I think he's the perfect small ball five. You know, great defensively, a great perimeter threat. I think he's going to be really important for the Clippers' success, and it's why I sneakily have them uh, rocketing up. And maybe I kept them as my pick. Maybe I didn't for the championship. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm as. Uh, I agree with the. Better than uh, better than Montrezl Harrell uh, take uh, probably better than Montrezl Harrell in terms of uh, I guess morale <laughs> if we're going to go uh, that route uh, I do certainly agree with that um, but yeah um, I, I obviously the Russell Westbrook quick we made all the uh, we made all the points before um, my pick in Chris Paul and again we've 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 talked about this. It's the it's his ability to make to make players better and to boost them into a level that you know they they weren't once before. Uh, my Smokey being John Wall, I just think um, he's such a dynamic player with so much to prove that he is going to want to um, yeah he's he's gonna want to. Oh, my Google Doc has died, and Jack has left me. Oh, apologies there, ladies and gentlemen. Some technical difficulties. My internet decided to die. Um, but we are back. Um, anyway, I think where we were going was I I picked Chris Paul, um, given that, you know, we've already explained how much of an impact he's going to make on a new team with new bigs. Um, you know, DeAndre Aiden's going to have a big year under him. So um, I think his impact on that on the Phoenix team will be great. John Wall as well. He's such a, an active and exciting player that I think no matter where he goes, he's got so much to prove that um, he's going to make an impact no matter where he, he, go, he goes. And he, he obviously went to Houston. Um, moving on, Jackie Boy, Defensive Player of the Year. We're both taking Anthony Davis for obvious reasons. Uh, the guy set it as a personal goal for him to make Defensive Player of the Year last year. Um, didn't make it. And so he's going to be coming back with a vengeance next year. It is going to be his only focus. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add on AD's DPOI candidacy? I think it's because of the fact that he didn't win it last mm. year and he proved in the postseason that you know him and Giannis are the two best defenders and you could make a, a credible argument that Davis is better and maybe the best defensive player in the league right now. There's a narrative for him being like, well, we should have given it to him last year. Let's give it to him this year. My smoky was Ben Simmons because... He might be the most versatile defender in the league. And a guy that can guard, you know, one through five, mm. you know, he's not a great room protector, but that's probably his only defensive weakness. Whereas, you know, a guy like AD literally can do everything defensively, mm. apart from maybe some of the smalls. But um, when he was guarding Damian Lillard, uh, he certainly proved that. So he is just so damn good defensively. I would be surprised if he doesn't win it. I think the other thing that's stopping him is health. And, you know, there's perennial guys that are sort of in the conversation, you know, Rudy Gobert, you know, I'm sure that he'll be in there after getting his max extension. Mm. You could also throw in a guy like Draymond Green. You know, if the Golden State Warriors are really good this season and Draymond is back to his best, 
you know, Draymond Green is one of the best defenders of all time. And, you know, he revolutionized the mm-hmm. position and, you know, small ball. So it, there's a, a conversation that Draymond Green could be there. He won't be there on opening night, though. So he'll have to be doing no. it for the other 71 games. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't hate that. Um, I, I, I thought the race was too close to pick a Smokey. I think just Davis is out and out like clear i i think he's gonna win um if not it probably will be a Giannis again but like voter fatigue is a is a thing um so yeah i I, I, all my all my eggs are in the uh, in the davis basket uh for mvp we both had kd um again he's got a lot to prove on a new team he's gonna want to bring his best game in game out um and he's gonna want to play and that's the big thing when a lot of a lot of star players might be resting um you know he might be playing 5 to 10 more games than um than 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 other superstars in the league potentially um you know i i'm not a person on the inside that knows Kevin Durant's uh, load management but this is just a this is just a feeling that i have he's going to want to push to play um, and providing that he is healthy, uh, will play as many games as he can. Uh, my smoke is LeBron James. Very unsexy pick. Um, but he's great. LeBron James is good, Jack. Newsflash. Oh, wow, eh, Nicholas? Going out on the limb with your hot takes there. I'm not, <laughs> I take all the compliments back about your hot takes from earlier. Look, <laughs> Um, it, it's always is it smoky because it's like is LeBron going to play enough games? You know, this might be the first season where oh, we see that's LeBron. That's what I mean. Like he hasn't won an MVP. He's been in the conversation, but he hasn't won an MVP in oh, a while. The last time he's regular season MVP It's just because he doesn't yeah. give a shit about the regular season generally. Yeah, um, that's true. And there's always someone who does. There's always someone who's moving up through the ranks that wants to prove himself. Um, and I just. Yeah, I think LeBron James actually caring about the regular season is the smoky part of this, because uh, he was he was obviously close last year and he was he was upset last year, so he may want to uh, try that a little bit harder and and try to try to win it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's fair. I Joel and beat is mine. You know, all the points that I made earlier, it's mm. just in conditioned, um, and and I think you know. Smoke, it wouldn't be smoky, but you know, Luka Doncic is a guy that is the the favorite. And if the Dallas Mavericks, as you can probably see in our standings, if they get a top four home court advantage, then there's certainly a, a very legitimate case for him as well. Yep, beautiful. Now the standings, Jackie boy. This is where it tends to get a little bit convol. This is where it gets, tends to get a little bit convoluted for me. But we won't go through them. I mean, you can see them. You can see them there if you wanted to uh, look through them, but highlights for you jackie boy i mean i'll start with i'll start with me um i've got washington and atlanta scraping in at seven and eight uh which is a little bit different than your traditional sort of you know well obviously like brooklyn milwaukee philly boston they're all in the mix uh but i've got washington and atlanta pipping those last two spots and brooklyn finishing top not only that not only will brooklyn finish top they will make the the east eastern conference finals and win uh, so they will be they will be heading to the NBA Finals, my boy. What do you, what do you uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, look, I got Milwaukee and Brooklyn with Milwaukee winning. I think that you know Giannis is finally going to be able to step up when it matters. Mm. You know the other sort of highlights for me. I know you didn't have Indiana there, which is probably a, a bit of a, mm. a hot take for you. I had Washington in over Atlanta. I just you know. But partly for you, we used to like in the early season of this podcast give each other so much shit. Oh, look at Brooklyn, twenty wins, Rondo Hollis Jefferson, and now we got Kevin Durant. You guys got Russell Westbrook. It's a bit of a love fest. Sometimes we we got older, we learn to appreciate each other more, and I think life is better that way, Nick. Oh, life is cute. better that way. That's cute. <laughs> but yeah, those are I guess the sort of big highlights for me. You know, you can roll a dice for anywhere one to five, one to six for me. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you've got Miami finishing as high as second whereas i've got them finishing one two three four five six um sixth so that's that's like a bit of a discrepancy the rest of them are pretty much in the ballpark um like toronto finishing around there boston philly um but yeah so i'm higher on the uh, i guess you have to be like cautiously optimistic with uh, brooklyn you've got them finishing fifth yeah cautiously optimistic because you know me i like to Taper it down and then be pleasantly surprised. Lovely, lovely. All right, Western Conference. This is where things went a little bit 
I mean, I, I I went a little bit crazy. I was like, I was, I was getting to the end of this dock and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, why not? Uh, we've both got the Lakers uh, topping the Western Conference, which is no surprise after the year they had and the trades that they have made. Highlights for me, Jackie boy. Um, I've shown a lot of love to Denver, putting them second. I put Phoenix fifth ahead of Golden State, Utah, and Portland. So I'm fairly low on Utah. Utah have not... Uh, they didn't impress me last year, and I don't think they're going to impress me again. That being said, they'll still make the playoffs. And seventh is ab- about, I reckon, where they sit. Um, you disagree? Look, I, I'm i just a bit higher on Utah. You know, I think that, you know, I spoke about this in the Power Rankings pod with, with Corey and Nick. Teams from, you know, three to six, uh, I, it's, a, it's a crapshoot. You know, who, mm. who knows? It's going to be about health it's going to be about productivity mm. and i think health's probably going to be the main one and i think utah have enough depth they've made some improvements i think denver losing jeremy grant's going to make them have a little bit of a step back but i wouldn't be surprised if you know your boy population control porter jr steps yep. up and gets the vaccine and gets some superpowers and that's the plan um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the plan but yeah in, in saying that we both have what we had originally last year with the the clippers and the lakers mm. um i have the clippers winning the, the uh, Western Conference Finals. I, I'm going back to Clipperland, even though they burnt me before. No, I've got too much faith in the Lakers. They've shown that they can do it. Uh, as I mentioned, I think they've gotten stronger. Um, they've lost some good players, but their, their acquisition is amazing. Uh, the AD LeBron relationship is just going to get better. Um, it's all smiles in Lakerland, and I and. You know, they don't have a long road to go to get to the championship, whereas the Clippers, I feel like their road is paved with more obstacles um, given the turmoil that they had last year. Not like, you know, who they're playing and their schedule. I haven't looked that deep into it. Um, But the Lakers will have less obstacles on their road to this championship because they've proven that they've they've proven the naysayers. They're not going to have the same media, you know, um, doubts. You know, you're not going to have the articles as like, are the clip, are the Lakers suited to win this championship? No, but you're going to get a million articles discussing the legitimacy of the Clippers, um, and that that can be that can 100 be burdening. Uh, that being said, repeating is very very hard. So it um, is. That's why I didn't have it. Yeah, I think that we'll see, we'll gonna... see how that goes. I think, yep. uh, and I mentioned this before. I think they've got the ment- the the caliber of, bl- the caliber of players to do it. They've got very sound mental players um i think from what i saw last year obviously we'll see how that goes in the in the next season um i can't speak for repeating on a championship so uh can't exactly speak from experience there but everyone uh every expert that has told me that it's hard uh, i tend to trust them so uh we'll see but i have faith in lebron james and anthony davis i think they have the uh they have the stones to do it Jackie fair, boy, mate. that is our season preview. How good was that? First episode of season five. There were some lovely picks in there, um, some crazy ones. I also forgot to mention that I've got I've put Dallas fourth, um, which is probably a lot higher than most people would put them. Um, again, Luca, I'm in love with Luca, so. Um, yeah, so anyway, all power, all, all power to uh, Dallas. But yeah, good stuff, Jackie boy. And uh, we are in for a an exciting fifth season of the podcast. It's, uh, it's going to be a good one. Yes, sir. Jackie boy, that just about does it for another week. So we'd just like to say thank you for tuning in to another episode of Just Ball Things. As always, you can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Player FM, Spreaker, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to your podcasts, uh, we will be there. Uh, Do us a favor, if you're listening to us on Apple, leave us a rating and review. It helps other people find the show. If you are watching us on the YouTubes, hit the like button, comment with whatever the hell you want, Uh, and hit that subscribe button to the OTG network. Hit that notification bell as well, so you know when fresh content comes out by OTG and jbt alike uh remember it's you guys that make the show great so we appreciate any and every post heading our way so until next week keep balling superstars